Hello again and welcome to another presentation from the Agency for Public Information. The API is committed to highlighting the plans, programs, projects and policies of the Government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I am Ashisi Assam. Thank you very much for joining us on this evening's edition. This evening, we bring you a report on the assessment of damage in Bekwe done by the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, following the passing of Tropical Storm Harvey. And we bring you a report on the CASIP Business Incubation Program done in collaboration with the Government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The details to these stories will follow Newswatch. Stay with us for this informative package. Hello and welcome to this edition of the API's News Watch. I'm Cherise John. On Tuesday, August 15, 2017, the Windward Islands Farmers Association, WINFA, in collaboration with the Caribbean Policy Development Center, CPDC, hosted a workshop on climate smart agriculture at the Methodist Church Hall. The overall objective of the workshop is to enhance the opportunities for sustainable livelihoods across Eastern Caribbean farming communities by introducing new technology for cost-effective farming operations with particular use of renewable energy. Mr. Gordon Bisfam, Executive Director of the CPDC, while addressing participants, highlighted key features of the overall project. This project has several components that should excite farmers because we're not only going to be focusing on building the knowledge base of farmers, but we're going to have an exercise where you will be allowed to share your experiences. And we'll provide an avenue for individual mentoring of the farmers, where people will have experiences and a wide area of activities. There's also a grant component to this project, where individuals or associations can apply for and benefit from as much as 5,000 euros per person or per organization. And we're going to have a special focus on rural women and youth. In addition to promoting climate change adaptation measures to reduce energy costs and strengthen sustainable livelihoods, the project aims to ensure greater food security across the region. The Grenadine Island of Miro is set to go green thanks to a new initiative by the St. Vincent Electricity Services Limited, VINLEC in collaboration with the Rocky Mountain Institute and the Cavern War Room, RMI, CWR. A new solar photovoltaic and battery storage microgrid project is currently in the initial stages of construction on the one and a half square mile pristine Grenadine Island. On Thursday, August 17, 2017, Vinlec held consultations with residents of Miro to update them on the progress of the initiative. Erlen Myers, planning engineer for transmission and distribution at Vinlec and project manager for this venture, gave technical details about the project during the community forum. Um, this project will be constructed on 31,000 square feet of land just adjacent to the existing power station compound. Currently, the generation capacity here in Mary is approximately 308 kilowatt, and this is being supplied only by diesel engine. So therefore, with the construction of this project, we will basically see a mixture of diesel and solar being used to generate electricity. And from this project, approximately 46% of the energy generated will be only from solar. The Miro Microgrid project, with an estimated cost of upwards of US $600,000, is funded by the Ray and Tai Norda Foundation and Vinlec, and is part of St. Vincent and the Grenadine's shift towards increasing the utilization of renewable energy technologies. Prime Minister Dr. The Honorable Ralph Gonzales lauded the Ministry of Economic Planning and the administrators of the Zero Hunger Trust Fund for their continued efforts in alleviating the economic hardships of indigents within our society. Prime Minister Gonzales was at the time addressing the sitting of the House of Assembly on July 31, 2017. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to offer brief congratulations to the 
the Zero Hunger Trust Fund, who on Friday commenced the distribution of financial assistance to students who are beneficiaries under its Adopt a Classroom program. There are 295 students receiving support under this program. There are 20 kindergarten children from these 12 schools. Seven started last year and then another five. Just in case honorable members may not know, the schools are Chateaubelech, Barley Anglican, Barley Government, Fair Hall Primary, Sandy Bay Government, Fancy Government, Myro Primary, Rose Hall Primary, Clare Valley Government, Calico Government, Anglican, Lauders Primary, and Gome Government. I've been advised by the by Laura Anthony Brown, who heads the Zero Hunger Trust Fund, that these schools were selected on the basis of the well, one of the important bases was the, the survey, the census report dealing with issues of poverty. Here's where we end this edition of News Watch for Tuesday, August 22nd, 2017. I'm Charis John. Have a good evening. Comprehensive disaster management is about every one of us being ready to manage any natural or man-made event, like earthquakes, tsunamis, fires, oil spills, volcanoes. It's about having your home or business prepared with an emergency plan and supplies. It's prevention, keeping your home, business, or community well-maintained and safe. It's about being able to get your life back on track after the event. Will you be ready? Visit WeReady.org, brought to you by Sadima and the European Union. A message from the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO. Welcome back to our program. For most parts, St. Vincent's and the Grenadines were spared significant damage by Tropical Storm Harvey, which threatened to impact this country last Friday, August 18th. There were reports of flooding in Fancy, Owea, Sandy Bay, and in the Grenadine Islands of Bekwe and Mustique. To this end, the director of the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, Michelle Forbes, headed a team of government officials from the Ministry of Housing and the Transport and Works to Beckway, where an assessment of the damage was done. The API accompanied the team and filed this report. end of the the rain squall i should call it is because it was not really a storm that passed through beckway it was just intense rain just after 11 o'clock i was on the road yesterday morning and um, the rain was still falling at that point in time but some of the things that i observed was very very um it was almost distressing in a large extent where i think for the first time beckway has experienced what we interpret as a flash flood when that we had much much more rain than we did experience yesterday in the past on other occasions but yesterday was so fast and so intense 
and the runoff was so rapid that the general comment from people on the island is I've never seen it like this before in my lifetime and I'm talking about people who have lived here for over 50 years who have never seen this, this type of flooding water flow into my business place affect me um, I lose I, my deep freeze but I don't know what happened to it yet because I'm not plugged it in yet as yet what you can see I take up all the carpets on all the mat my brother have to scrub up the whole place all my deep freeze is off for now because <coughs> I don't know what's taking place with him so I can't say until further notice it's bad it's not good for the business, but thank God I'm still alive. This has been the worst I've ever seen in my life in Bekwe. For two hours, what the damage can be done in two hours. It just was amazing. When I leave my house, it, I was driving, it's like driving down a river. You know, water was splashing up from the back of the car and coming over. Coming straight over, it was just unbearable. What we have observed here today and what we saw yesterday from some photos is mainly flood damage. We had a heavy rainfall in the early hours of, well, shouldn't say early hours of the morning. We had some pretty heavy showers passing through and would have um, impacted Beckway. So a lot of the, lot of the problems that we saw, the um, impacts we saw today was mainly drainage related poor drainage, inadequate drainage and the heavy runoff because um, most of the rivers tend to be dry or the guts, I shouldn't say rivers, there are no rivers down here, but the guts or the drains tend to be dry during a, um, a period where you don't have rainfall. So when you have this type of excess rainfall, you are seeing um, the flooding coming down in, in areas that you have not seen flooding before. We met with some residents who said they have never seen this type of flooding in over 40 years and we know with climate change and with the different events that we are having, the, in, the events tend to be more intense. So with this rainfall we had a bit of flooding. In Port Elizabeth, which um, had um, most of the flooding, was mainly small businesses. We saw over 10 businesses and I know that number, those numbers will go up that would have been impacted and flooded out. Some flooded out completely and we saw persons actually going ahead with their cleanup operations um, since yesterday into today. What do you have the ground here? Mm -hmm. yeah, the damage. Yeah, you know, for example. Yeah, because all the heavy water. Yeah. yeah. See all these damage. Yeah. 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 All along with the water here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 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 All my storage, too. what I have done here, all wet. Yeah, whatever is yeah, steel or rust out. My bike was that This one here in the back. Oh, this one. This one. So I was saying, get it just to be great. Yeah, because it's a little bit. Well, I place everything down to inside. This one's like 450. Along with the work, I had to spend like a hundred dollars to get a new one back, you know? Mm -hmm. You can see the bag was on the water. Mm -hmm. All these is the two hundred fifty you see. This is a good stuff. Yeah. 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 You carved them yourself? Yeah. yeah. Good. Very good. What we need to do is to wash them, get off the, 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 the silt from them. Yeah. We would have visited Hamilton 
friendship and also Paget Farm. Those areas, especially in, in um, Hamilton, would have been impacted by flooding from up in the hills and the water coming down. Um, friendship also and in Paget Farm, a bit more of the landslides and flooding um, combined. And Paget Farm is one of the areas that we tend to have flooding almost every year. Um, once there's heavy rainfall so it's a it's an annual almost an annual um, problem in in Beckway, especially with the flooding in Paget farm area and most of the problems we're seeing is really from inadequate drainage or poor drainage It's going to be a major undertaking. I'm sure the damage is going to run into the millions of dollars if Braxa is going to repay all these drains and the bridges and the roads. But it's a it's a major undertaking that we have to assault um, in a constructive manner. And I am sure the government and uh, the relevant authorities will be looking at that positively from here on, as the the rapid assessment today has shown that there is there is an intense. Um, problem. We are still seeing some signs of persons throwing garbage into the rivers and that would have um, resulted in some blockages. So we know I've noticed some bins throughout, um, throughout Beckway on our, on our assessment today for persons to desist from throwing the garbage into the rivers. Persons can also ensure that they have adequate drainage around their, house, their homes. I, I noticed we went to some homes that do not have any drainage at all and you know, basically the house above the water flows, like, flows into the one below into their yard and so so I think I'd, um, person, families or ho homeowners can actually construct their own drainage in and around their property to actually take care of some of the water that is coming from above them and some of their water also and ensure that water meets up with the drainage, the, um, the public drains. Thanks to the, the generosity of, of people with heavy equipment like the Beckwood Beach Club and other tractor operators like um, I think this is the gentleman that drives both Davis's tractor got involved and uh, cleared most of the streets in Port Elizabeth and Paget Farm. I think the tractor from Beckwood Beach Club was working from about 6 o'clock yesterday morning, so from about 11 o'clock yesterday until after 6.30 yesterday evening. And he was working again this morning until just shortly we still left him on the site on the roads, clearing debris from the roads. Plans we have for Beckway, I know we, um, within the next year or so, we'll be, we actually will be building what we call a satellite warehouse, our regional warehouse for Beckway that will be able to hold equipment uh, for, the, for the community of Beckway that can actually use for cleanup operations and to have our community disaster groups and teams in Beckway be more organized and ready to actually assist, the, assist their neighbors in the event that we have um, flooding and other, and basically in preparedness, not so much when you have a response part of it, but really is to more raise the awareness of disaster management related activities or disaster risk reduction and climate change so that people are more aware of their surroundings and what can happen. So um, in a nutshell, most of the problems here in Beckway was, was really um, flooding and a lot of block drainage, a lot of drainage, drainage and, and, and guts that need cleaning and channeled. The ABI's presentation will continue with a report on the CASIP Business Incubation Program. Do stay with us. A lot goes into shaping an individual, but it all starts here. What may seem to us like simple fun is critical to their education and overall development. It's how they start to define and understand the speech, how they develop their motor skills and hand-eye coordination. Remember, children are never too young to learn. This message was brought to you by the UNICEF Office for Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean, the Caribbean Child Support Initiative, and this station. You're viewing a presentation from the Agency for Public Information. 
Encouraging innovative ideas through entrepreneurship is the hallmark of the CASIP Business Incubation Program. And the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines has taken on the initiative and is ensuring that no stone is left unturned. The mission to groom businessmen and women who were selected as incubators into successful entrepreneurs. We hear more in the following reports. The Caribbean Regional Communication Infrastructure Program, or CASIP Business Incubator Program, is an initiative facilitated by the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and is geared towards progressively and systematically boosting the growth and development of entrepreneurs who modeled their business plan with a degree of innovation through technology. The program, which was launched in 2014, will officially end next year and has assisted 21 business owners with a grant of over $2.5 million. The journey so far has been met with success stories, but not without its share of challenges. After all, these characteristics bear the realities of any business model. The incubator's hands are held over a period of one year, where a range of skills are being learned to assist them in becoming a beacon in their field of business. Dexter Baker started out his professional career as a teacher and identifies how connecting with nature is such a vital part of his business. I'm the co-owner of Ecofines, a wood-based fabrication business, which take a lot of interest in the way we develop things, protecting and harnessing and putting back into the environment. For instance, most of our material that we use, 80% I must say, is recycled material. I use pallet wood and I also use locally sourced wood. Now the wood that I source locally is often from trees that people never use for um, woodworking. For instance, this piece I have here is made from breadfruit wood. Okay? And the other pieces over here are made from pallet wood. And in the middle here we have pieces made from uh, mahogany bark. Now this mahogany, people use mahogany but the barks, nobody use them because they are not good for woodworking so I take them and I'll turn them into a um, piece that uh, aesthetic, aesthetically pleasing and has a high art value, artistic value. Although his studies at the Edna Manley School of Arts began with music, it later led him to a newfound love where his creative energies were on a path to fulfill something totally different. I studied um, at the Edna Manley School of Visual and Performing Arts, Edna Manley, Jamaica. And while at the school, my first degree was in music, but they also had an art program at that school. And I fell in love with art at that school. At the time, I did not know I would get into art, but when I got home, I decided, you know what? Not just loving it, but to do something with it. Then I started um, studying, researching how to um, do woodworking. And when I felt comfortable, then I started getting tools little by little and started practicing. At first it wasn't perfect, but as I went along, I got better and better and my confidence rose and I even got to the point that I can do work for others and provide for clients on a regular basis. Sheldon Wood is another recipient of a grant from CASIP, which has totally transformed his life. Stormy Winds Productions is an audiovisual media production company in St. Vincent. Um, we specialize in three major categories of production, which include audio production, um, which entails music production, um, audio recording, jingles, voiceovers, that kind of thing. Um, video productions, which has to do with business ads, wedding videos, uh, music videos, for example, and also photography, wedding photography, um, product ads, these, these sort of things. Um, we also do aerial photography and video as, as part of the business services. The business was registered in 2014. So from 2015, we basically started operations. Uh, we moved into Diamond, the Center of Excellence building, uh, where we set up the studio part of the business. So um, to facilitate an easier flow of traffic to, for folks who may want to come and do recordings and, and these kind of things, um, a dedicated space just for that. 
that's a diamond. I found out from Casip to uh, a friend. Um, they advised that there was this government grant and they were offering funding for businesses to do, um, to get equipment and training and all these kind of things. So at first I was surprised at a, a grant. <laughs> I mean, what, what is the catch? Um, but when I got further information about it, and I realized it, it was actually trying to help start the businesses. I say, well, I, I, I had to make use of the opportunity. So I applied, I got all the necessary inf information I applied, and um, I was successful, so I'm grateful for that. Everything you see here is basically from the grant, um, which includes all, all my equipment, all my studio monitors, my cameras, which you don't see here, and all of that was, I was able to get all these things from the CASIP grant. Language specialist and professor Lesbia Tesorero Martin is optimistic about the future of her business since she now has her own language institute, a dream realized thanks to the CASIP program. Wow, I feel very excited about the future of my language school. I felt really, really happy because it's been hard for me to reach this far. Uh, I've been working very hard. Um, I've been self-employed since 2008 which is at the time I registered the school and I've been working very hard having small groups of students in my house then uh, doing online classes that's all for what I wanted to have which was the language school in St. Vincent and the Grenadines a school that could receive students from other countries to study here English um, it wasn't enough of course uh, but I didn't have the resources now that uh, I have this help through CARSIP I'm going to be able to move forward and um, reach to the next level. For me, it's going to be great to develop my online platform more, to have a language lab. It's like opening the door for international students to come and study English here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and to offer a better, better service to um, people from our community. It's, it's very important. It opens doors for the future. I always motivate my, my children uh, from the fourth, the fifth form, so who come here to these classrooms to learn Spanish or to prepare for the Spanish for CSEC. I always motivate them to learn the Spanish for communication and explain to them that by 2050, Spanish is going to be one of the most important languages in the United States, which is one of the countries they, they go to study or um, I always tell them that so the importance of learning Spanish because geographically St. Vincent is located very close to some Spanish-speaking countries and uh, if it's English for example so people who come here to work in St. Vincent, Spanish speakers, it's so important for, for them to learn English. So to learn another language, to have another language is to open a door to your future. Managing Director of ICT Orbit, John Melville, explains how his experience in the technological field was a stepping stone in being a part of this extraordinary program. I have a background in IT and telecoms, that is over 30 years. Um, and this has progressively gone from representing one of the major uh, telecoms company here in the past, which was Cable and Wireless. Um, I therefore transitioned myself into doing ICT consultancy over the last 10 years. Uh, this company in itself was formally uh, recognized back in 2015 as a coordination between a few business partners. And the objective of this was to provide uh, enhanced ICT services to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Well, the opportunity was presented to us back in 2015 of the CASIP uh, having an incubatee uh, program and we felt that this was a good opportunity for the company itself to align itself with the same concepts and objectives of the government of St. Vincent and using the CASIP uh, program to leverage ourselves. Predominantly, ICT Orbit offers two core services we offer a managed service provider entity, and we also offer an ICT consulting service. And why I would differentiate both 
Um, in the ICT consultancy, we basically design, build, and support ICT services and solutions for major customers in St. Vincent. And the MSP side, which is the managed service provider, is where we're now getting involved into uh, what we call a new proactive, preventative approach to offering ICT services. And if I may expand on that, is that that now is offering a new dimension where we pretty much focus on preventative maintenance rather than reactive maintenance. In most of ICT or telecoms environments, most of the customers in St. Vincent have been basically, when it's broken, they call a support agent. We have sort of shifted that focus in being able to offer you a service that tells you before it's broken what is happening to your network, what is happening to your computer systems, and therefore give you advance notice in which you can correct before having to wait until it's broken. Broadland Daniel's passion for teaching and robotics motivated him to becoming a business owner. It was therefore not a surprise that he happily jumped on board the CASIP program. I had in mind all along to do something like this, but I had no chance of possibly doing it. And then here came CASIP. Right? So I saw the opportunity and I, I seized the moment and I, I went for it. Right? And right now my business is, is called My Carry Tech because it's carbon technology and it's ours, it's mine. Right? And in this business there are two main aspects of it. All about teaching though. One, as you can see there, it's all about online courses in either CAPE or CSEC subjects. Right? And you know, while at university, you know, this was, was very big for me. And if it wasn't for my lecturers who actually had their notes online and so on, man, I would have not done well, right? But because of that, I got first class, that only, right? So the, that's the reason why I decided to start the same, same thing. With my online course itself, it's a place where students can log in 24-7, you know, unlimited service from over a year, and they can get everything pertaining to a subject the entire syllabus, a teacher is not needed. <laughs> it's not, right? So everything will be on the site, from games to, to quizzes to flashcards. The, the notes are out the window. Students no longer really read handouts and notes. So our notes are in a form of flashcards and so on. So that's how we, we do it here, right? And also, I love robotics. I couldn't leave it out. I decided to do aerial robotics. As you know, STEM has already the, the land bot. So I decided to do something different, right? So then I branched off to do the ones in the sky, right? So we're basically going to program robots to fly automatically or by using a, a remote itself, right? And with this, you know, it can really open the mind of, of individuals. If you know right now in, in the States, people are now thinking of, of building you know, aerial craft like drone to fly from one state to the next, right? And if we expose our kids in St. Vincent to this kind of technology, you know, the sky is really the limit, right? And also with robotics too, I branched off into something called 3D printing, right? This hand was printed from a, a printer, right? You can simply draw it. This printer right here. Right, so you draw the image, you plug in the card into this, and it's printed for you, right? And as you know, prosthetics is a very big thing, right? And with this technology, you can actually design a hand and print it for a fraction of the price compared to the, the, um, the going price right now. As you see here, you know, the hands can really evolve from just being this to something like this, where it covers the entire arm itself. So all of this is what we're going to be doing and teaching at our program, all right? But not a hand only, you can simply design anything you want and it prints it for you. Parents who 
you know, who want to give their, their child the extra edge. You know, there can be cases where you're studying a subject in school and there's no space to do another one, right? There's no other option. With us, you can actually do another course, right? And still, with the school's permission, sign up through the school and do the course itself, right? And the, the good thing with the site is also um, the parent themselves can log in to see how the child is doing because there's a progress bar that tells the child how far they are in a certain course, right? So it tracks their performance, tracks where they are at in the course as well, and using games and so on will keep the, the children um, enthusiastic and actually wanting to, to learn. Ronald Lewis is the CASIP Business Incubator Manager. So as a Business Incubator Manager, it is my responsibility to ensure the facilitation of growth and development for these ICT entrepreneurs. What does that mean? It means really that I am almost like a mother hen um, sitting on her eggs waiting for them to hatch. So what we do in the incubation program is that we offer training, counseling, advice, mentorship. We are partners with these businesses in many cases. We have to do a lot of hand-holding and sometimes offer tough love. So my role is one where I wear many different hats at times, but my overall purpose and goal is towards the development of these entrepreneurs. During the selection process, of course, they had to have identified a, a target market. But you could identify a target market without really understanding market trends and changes within a market because business is not static, it's dynamic, it's always changing. So we always emphasize to them that if you understand that there's change within the market, how do you identify that change? What is that change and what do I need to do to address that change? So even though they would have identified target markets, they may not have had the effective strategies put in place to be able to effectively pursue the markets and or grow the markets as well. In this journey, it's all about the experience and this program is geared towards exposing incubators to the world of business. Well, the experience, I must say, has been a good one. Despite teething problems, despite little hiccups and that you might have in a startup business, I cannot complain because CASIP has actually given us, me and the other incubate, incubators, a big jump start because the capital investment I mean, if you had to go, for the, go to the bank for that kind of investment, every Monday morning you had to wonder, how am I going to pay my loan? But no, we don't have to study about paying loans. All we need to focus on is marketing, making sure our product is of a high standard and being part of the training and represent CASIP and do what we should do. To be honest, I've never thought of myself as a businessman because what I do, I did it as a hobby. I was employed at a local bank and... Um, doing the eight to five kind of job. It was a hobby. So it was a leap of faith basically stepping out from that area to starting a business, um, applying for funding, getting equipment, doing training, getting staff, all these other things. Um, so it, it didn't come as easy as you know some people say oh, I, I want to start a business but it was a big it was a big change and i had to do some mindset changes as well as how i approach certain things it's it's been great it's had its uh, you know ups and downs but uh, overall the project has been running quite smoothly um, there were some initial setbacks but those have pretty, pretty much been ironed out program manager highlights some of the goals of the program what we want them to, to walk away with from this program is to be able to identify markets effectively, grow markets, um, and really and truly be able to understand their markets. Because what we have are many businesses who really and truly don't understand the markets to whom they cater. And because you don't understand your markets, you don't grow or you die, you fizzle out. So we stress understanding markets, understanding your market, and being able to provide value to that market. So one of the tools, of course, we hope that they would get is the understanding that without a market, I have no business. And so that understanding of who my market is, what my market value, is one of the things that we stress most to our incubators. 
The goal of any business owner is not just being relevant to current markets, but to have a solid plan that takes into consideration global economic factors. Personal goals expressed by most of the incubatees include not only ensuring that their businesses last, but to expand their market share beyond St. Vincent and the Grenadines. In the next five, ten years, I don't want just to provide for local clientele, but I want to also reach regional and international. Because as I told you, right now we have this whole thing about climate change and um, how things, the environment is being impacted by practices that go against proper, environment, proper environmental management. So for instance, I utilize a lot of pallet wood and a lot of discarded wood. So I want to bring awareness not just locally but regionally and internationally to um, the fact, especially locally, because in St. Vincent we throw away everything as pallet, pallet wood is thrown away all over the place and cause a nuisance. I in turn take up these pallet wood and turn them into valuable products that people love because they have a story behind them and each each piece of pallet wood has its own character. My plan for the future is to continue providing Spanish as a foreign language courses for people to, uh, from our community and to open English courses. I already have English as a second language courses ongoing here in, in the school with some students from Venezuela and other Latin American countries residing in St. Vincent and I want to expand this market. I want to bring more students from South America or Latin America to study here in St. Vincent. As I said before, now that I'm going to count on the help um, that CARSIP is going to offer, it's offering me, I'm going to have a language lab, I'm going to have the technological platform that I require for this to happen. I feel really excited about the future of my language school. I am offering courses to adults and young adults at the moment. I also have a special program for, um, for Spanish for CXC, teenagers from the fourth to the fifth form. And I plan to open even Spanish courses or programs for preschoolers and children. Without that grant, I don't think I would have been able to establish in the way that I am right now. Um, it would have taken me a bit longer for sure, or maybe put me in some kind of um, financial debt. Um, but with the grant, um, I definitely have no regrets. And I get to work along with a bunch of really nice people um, as I'm learning more about business and, and, and the business side of things. Because I've, I've been, my main focus has been on the production and the actual work. But being in business, I also have to look at it as a business and try to find ways on how I can make my business successful. So CASIP has, always, has also provide a training on how I can establish and, and basically grow my business. So definitely no regrets whatsoever. The training would have covered varying aspects of business from um, marketing, how do you market, how do you look for customers, potential customers, how you approach customers, um, to pricing, customer service, all these different things. And um, some things you take for granted you know, starting up a business, you, you, you think you may know certain things and then when it's brought into light, you realize, hey, I didn't know that before. Or you pick up bits of information here and there. And so you learn to see how you can apply them into your own business. And I think um, through the training with all these different areas, I have been growing. The training has been a sort of a rigid program. It basically focused from customer service down into finance management as well into marketing. So there have been a quite a, a good subset of training that is broad based, um, designed specifically for young entrepreneurs like ourselves. Well, our, our objective is not only to offer services in St. Vincent, but we're also looking at the wider Caribbean. Um, through the partnerships that we've established internationally. We believe that we will have a, a good um, leverage where we can offer services to most of the neighboring, uh, especially the OECS territories and beyond. Well, our clients is, is broad-based. Um, 
we basically, having the experience in working in the hospitality industry as well, we have clients in that industry and that basically focus from hotels, resorts, and that uh, major scope. We also offer services to the enterprise customers, government being one of the major enterprise customers here in St. Vincent. We also offer services to financial, uh, in the financial sector, to banks as well as to other finance ho um, wholesalers here in St. Vincent. I just would like to invite um people from St. Vincent to come and study Spanish here, come and apply. And uh, if you are a Spanish speaker residing in St. Vincent, come and study English with us. So we offer professional courses. Uh, we ad adhere to the Common European Framework of Reference for Languages, which is a framework that um, makes us understand the levels of language proficiency and makes understand the students how this progression between levels goes. So come, so we offer you high quality service and you will learn the language very quickly. The incubators within the program have been very um, receptive towards the support we've been offering. Many have even indicated that the impact have been positive. These many, many of them are entrepreneurs who would have had no indication of how to run a business successfully. They would have had a concept, they knew what they wanted to do, they knew that they wanted to be business people but they didn't know how. So from being in the program, um, what they have learned is that they have learned the techniques, the tools, the, the, they've gotten the guidance, the counseling, the support to be better at what they do. So I would say that the overall impact has been positive. As with any entrepreneur, entrepreneurship is not an easy road to walk, um, so to speak. I, I often liken entrepreneurship as, as an ocean filled with sharks. And so these entrepreneurs are trying to wade their way through an ocean filled with sharks. So many of the challenges would come from their end would be challenges regarding finances, access to financing. Um, sometimes it is access to markets and so on. But because of the availability of the grants provided through the CASIP, many of them have had that um, challenge or bottleneck alleviated uh, because they were able to purchase their equipment, they are now able to access financing and so on. So generally you would find the same, um, to, same bottlenecks or same obstacles in the way of many entrepreneurs. However, much of it has been uh, mitigated because, or alleviated because of the CASIP program. So we track them on a monthly basis, and what they do is that they have to provide for us their financial statements, or if they have not reached that stage as yet, we actually assess what they're doing. So we assess their market, um, is there growth in the market, have their customer base, base sorry, um, increased, um, what are the strategies that they're employing? And, and so we do have a, a report that we, we ask them to generate, but it is one that really is not a blanket report because many of the entrepreneurs, they're all different. And so we look for different um, indicators to success for, for different entrepreneurs or different incubators in this case. Having your own business offers a kind of a flexibility. It's not that you, it's a bunch of free time and, and you could just, you know, but I'm now able to explore new avenues, even in, in terms of the business. Um, it's not just looking within St. Vincent, but looking broader, um, expanding the horizon, um, looking outside of St. Vincent, re regional or whatnot. Um, I think that is something I would not have thought of before I got into business for, for myself, um, but I'm seeing, I'm seeing a possibility. Well, in the future, I see it spreading throughout the Caribbean, right? Because yes, there are more online you know, courses, but there's none exactly how I have it laid out, right? So my plan is starting off in St. Vincent and having it spread 
throughout the entire Caribbean. Because, you know, Cape and Sisek is in the Caribbean itself. All right? So that's my goal with the online course itself. This program is scheduled to be completed in 2018. And so we don't have much time when you, when you think about it. But the, the, the services that we're offering to them are very direct and impactful. So we are hoping that at the end of it, the effect would be one that is positive. One of the things that we always stress to the incubators is sustainability. And sustainability is, is just not a, a word that you use or you throw around. It means many different things for many different um, entrepreneurs or businesses. So we, we, we always stress to them at the end of the day, the bottom line is important, but being a sustainable business is even more so. Currently I'm working um, and bringing out a local rapper. Um, his name is Blanks. I'm working on a project for him that should be out in summer. I've done some songs for a local gospel artist. Her name is Nadine Howell. And a few other unknown persons, but we should hear more from them. So I don't want to let too much out. It. That's from the studio side, but I've also done work for businesses um, such as Oxano, Mavcom, Signature, rest, Restaurant, Arbitity Bank. Um, so it's, it's getting there. Business has, has been good. I think it is one, it's an initiative I think that is very targeted and direct. If you look at the world today, globalization has demanded that we move from our comfort zone and step into the world of technology, innovation. And I always say to my incubators, innovation is not about doing something new. It is doing something different that is effective and working for you. So the government's role in this is that they have identified and recognized that it's important for us to be a part of this global network. The world now is basically our backyard. And if St. Vincent and the Grenadines does not get um, up to date in terms of technology and innovation, we'll be left behind. So the government has recognized that, and so this initiative pushing incubators and pushing entrepreneurs, specifically in ICT, is an initiative that I think is um, one to be applauded. I would um, definitely advocate the positive approach of the government in offering this sort of incubator program and the grants that you can actually get from CASIP. Um, it has worked for us and I'm sure it's going to work for any other future incubator that uh, wants to align itself to ICT services. Without the, the government, without CASIP, you know, this would never have been possible. You know, yes, we have dreams, but without the finances to back it up, it, you, you will find a hard time getting it done. Right? So when Castle came on stream, you know, I realized that, you know, I can do this. With the help of the government and Castle, you know, I can actually fulfill my dreams. What I want to say to young Vincentians, we need to get out of the mode of thinking and talking about how hard and difficult things are in St. Vincent. And we need to become innovators and world changers because I never did woodworking in my life, I never did craft in my life. I learned on the internet, YouTube, I spent hours on YouTube figuring out and finding out things. And I am saying to every youth, don't sit down on the block and say you don't have think, something to do. That time you waste sitting down and idling, you could go and learn something, pick up a book, apprentice at a shop, do something. And if we all do something, we would make a bigger, better, brighter St. Vincent in years to come. Sheridan Lois, the API. We have come to the end of another presentation from the Agency for Public Information. On behalf of the API's production team, I am Ashisia Sama, thanking you very much for viewing and inviting you to join us again on Thursday for our next presentation. Do have yourselves a pleasant evening and a productive week.